I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, don't take a Valium. Listen to this. <laughs> Hi, this is Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 451, Give Your Home a Mood Boost. You know, Kelly, after Christmas, I think a lot of people are depressed when they put up all their Christmas decor and the tree is gone. It can be really depressing for people. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer, isn't it? But we love January. We love the clean slate. Mm -hmm. So... We're here to give you a lot of good tips and ideas on how to boost the mood of your home and thereby boost your own moods. You and I see it as a clean slate. We're just always, wherever we are, we enjoy, uh, as the song goes, wherever we are, that's where the party's at. Uh, so we, <laughs> and so we just, You're on a roll today, babe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the song title. And then, But we just kind of enjoy whatever phase we're in. So we love the holidays, and then when the holidays are over, we love the clean slate. But we know not everyone does. So we are here today to give you lots of ideas to kind of give your home a boost so that even though the tree isn't there, you're going to be kind of uplifted and excited for the day and feel like your home is completely refreshed in a, in a wonderful way. Excellent way to put it. Yeah, post-holiday blues out the door. And just remember, everyone, January is our birthday month. Anita and I have the same birthday for those of you who don't know that. So January 17th, we will be celebrating our birthday. Getting back to the topic. <laughs> okay. okay. Boosting your mood. Well, I have to say the bar is pretty low this year because, can I just share, I clipped my toenails the other day and it really picked me up. <laughs> I mean, like, that, I, I was, was like, like wow. where is she going with this toenail story? Because I'm already scared. I mean, they were okay, but they really needed some attention. And, you know, you can't get the pedicure. That, But that really did boost my mood. I felt great. You know, a little longer shower, a little deep oh condition, a little toenail clipping. Is this okay, where we so are? my bar is. And you're not editing this yes. out, actually? No, okay, I'm not going to. All right. This is where we are. And so we're going, like you said in the beginning, we're just going to enjoy where we are. And this is where we are right now. So you could, I'm not sure what you're going to come up with, but it's probably better than clipping your toenails. I think I have something better than clipping your toenails. Okay. So bring it up. Okay. Well, I'm thinking about where you're looking when you're sitting and I'm thinking you probably had your fireplace decorated for Christmas. So I think the first step would be to rearrange or redo what's on your fireplace because that's where you're looking. That's a focal point and that's probably looking pretty bare right now. So that's where I would start. You don't have to buy anything new, maybe just to rearrange what you have or move something from a different room up there. But I think this is the time to kind of do something completely different up there. And then after that, I would probably go and do the same thing to the coffee table, completely redo it. Maybe even just stuff you haven't even had on the coffee table again, because these are places that you look, and so these are really hot spots in your house where you're going to be looking and where it might seem sad that you're missing some festive things. Yes, it does have that sense of sort of something's missing, because even if it's just been for a couple of weeks, or some people do it right after Thanksgiving, once all the decorations are out, your house is so full. Uh, but I, I do really like the clearing off and the cleaning up and the putting away. I'm sort of ready to do that in January. I totally agree with you. Do something completely different. Put it all away, clean it up. You know I love cleaning. So that is also something I would be doing to boost the mood of my home is doing a nice deep clean. And then maybe you just leave it bare for a couple of days and just decide where you're going to go, you know. You don't have to immediately pull out what you had there before. Maybe change it up completely. I think it's time to change it. Yeah, I would definitely do it something different. Yeah, what I did this year, and I've done this in the past, but I think this year was a little more organized about it, is the stuff that I had out on the mantle, on the coffee table that I wasn't going to use for the, the Christmas decor, I took it all and I put it in one cabinet. 
And then I thought, well, I could just easily go and grab all that and stuff and put it back. But now I'm being inspired by what you're saying. And maybe I'm just never going to use that <laughs> stuff again. You know, maybe next year or maybe in the fall, because it was probably some fall stuff that I'm not going to want to put out now. Um, I have an idea about creating a spot for yourself where you can take a few minutes each day to sort of just be, you know, whether it's reading your book or whether it's writing in a journal or whether it's scrolling through Instagram or just having a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever it is, create a spot like that in your home. If you create it and you don't have to recreate it every time you want to enjoy that moment in time, you're more likely to actually sit there and relax there. So find a little spot, maybe near a window where you can maybe maybe add a little chair. Or if you have a chair there, maybe add a little poof, the little tiny side table. There's so many of those tiny little side tables now. They're almost just like perches for drinks. You could fit something like that almost anywhere. So I say Look around your home, see where you can add this. Maybe it's in your bedroom. That sounds pretty luxurious. Or maybe it's in the corner of the living room that isn't used very much. Or maybe you clear out a portion of your office and you do this. And so you have this lovely space that will be calling your name that you can head over and just relax. Because I think if you give yourself a few minutes a day to sort of just chill and reset and even if you're planning what you're going to do that day that really boosts my mood sometimes I have no time for myself most days I have no time for myself and I'm just going from one activity a lot of the time you know it's either work or I'm serving someone else's needs whether it be laundry or cooking or this or walking dogs or you know and all those things are not horrible and they're nice and I'm happy to be doing them but it doesn't really refill your tank so So see if you can create a spot in your home where you can refuel your tank and thereby boost your mood. I love that idea. And then maybe that'll encourage you to actually, you know, stop as you're walking past it. I mean, I think it makes it a nice look. Just it's relaxing just seeing a nice sitting area, but hopefully it will encourage you to actually stop and read a book or have a cup of tea there. So I love that idea. Exactly. We've talked about it for years jokingly, like, yes, we create these spots and we we like them when we walk past them. I'm really trying to make a concerted effort to actually enjoy that type of spot. Well, I th- yeah, I think I'm trying more too. Uh, something else, when you take the holiday decor out, you may notice some bare spots in your house. So I'm thinking this is a great time to rearrange your your furniture. Because again, it's you've got all this stuff cleared out. You probably have a little more room in the house. And it's just kind of a fun time to just really look at your house and say, is this really where I want things? And it's a fun time to try a different arrangement of your furniture. Maybe move a chair from one room. Maybe switch out some chairs so that you're just changing them from one room to another. I don't even necessarily mean buy new furniture, but just try some different arrangements. Some of them are going to work. Some of them aren't. The beauty of it is it's completely reversible. It's free. So if you don't like it, you can always put it back the way it was. Yeah. And redo and try it again. I think that's a wonderful idea. And again... I would be cleaning behind everything (laughs) when I'm moving it around. It's a great time to get behind the couch and do all those things. It really does boost my mood when I feel like my house is sparkly clean. Um, So maybe use that opportunity, pull everything away from the wall, move it around, and you can get into all those little nooks and crannies. So I have a cleaning question for you. Oh, you do? Well, I've been trying to clean the house myself. I've lost. You're so brave. I am brave. Well, I lost the people that were helping me. So I'm on my own. (laughs) Go go look for them. (laughs) I know. So uh, I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm just telling you, I'm, you know, this isn't my favorite thing to do is cleaning. So I did the thing where you, I broke it down and Uh it was just a little bit of cleaning every day over the course of two weeks where it covers everything and you weren't working on the weekends and I thought this is so easy Uh I'm not going to be working Uh for more than you know like an hour each day that was really great for two weeks and then it all fell apart because I don't like working on it every day who wants to clean every day so I'm kind of stuck now and then I and then I just kind of went for for a couple weeks just doing nothing 
and now it's all mess again. <laughs> And so now I've started again. I'm just like, what, how do you do this? I don't know how to do this. Make it work out right. Well, okay. We're going to digress for a second here, everybody. But this is really mood boosting. And if you don't have I, – I don't have anyone helping me. I haven't had someone helping me with the cleaning in many, many years. I just – I don't really like having people in my house. And I'm very particular. And with the blogging and the photo taking, I'm moving stuff all around all the time. Anyway, those are the reasons. Um I don't like that. Do a little bit here. I feel like that's kind of water buggy. Mm-hmm. I'd rather not that it ever gets super dirty. It covers everything. It covers everything, but it just spreads. Yeah, out. I mean, but it's it, you feel like you're doing it all the time. I I always do some surface things, and um, but I can't do it all in one day because I did do that, and I thought I was going to die. Oh, okay. See, that's how you I do it all do in it. one I'd day. Like pat- I'll just power through oh. one floor and then do another floor. But like hardcore, mm-hmm. like the um, baseboards, the whole deal. Vacuuming, wash, wiping How everything do down, do all, all of that. What am I, what is, is this what my life is going to be? I'm just like, what? <laughs> I have to do the baseboards now? Even Cinderella got to go to the ball. <laughs> I don't know about all this. <laughs> I think maybe you should just uh, hire aye, somebody. Aye, aye. There you go. Like, the baseboards. That'll make you happy. That'll boost your mood. <laughs> you could start interviewing for housekeeping. That'll okay. boost your mood. All okay, right. let's get back onto the topic. Everybody's got something like this. Something you bought on vacation or you fell in love with it online. A print. Of even a painting. A photo, maybe. And you'd be like, I'm going to get this framed. And you didn't. And it sits there. I've got them. I bet you do too. Go, go have it framed. Now, if you go to a local frame shop, which is a nice idea to support local. And if you can do that now, go get an estimate. See, it might be more than you want to pay for this particular item. If it's not a, a work of art and maybe it's some of your kids artwork, which you know is clearly a work of art, but maybe you don't want to spend $600 for a frame. There are so many online frame stores now. We were working with, uh, what was it, Art to Frames a year mm-hmm. or so ago, mm-hmm. Anita. They were uh, sponsoring the podcast. I think they're still around. And then there seemed to be them popping up left, mm-hmm. right, and center. There's Frame Bridge, Art to Frame, as I mentioned, and Level Frames that I know of. Very reasonable. They have maybe limited selections in the types of frames, but you send them your dimensions. They send you the frame. Sometimes you can just send in mm-hmm. the artwork. It gets framed and it gets sent back to you. Definitely a lot less expensive. And of course, if you've got a sort of normal sized piece of art, then you could just DIY it and frame it yourself. Maybe add a mat and make it look really professional. But get mm-hmm. that thing out of the closet or, you know, from mine are tucked in between a chair and the wall in my office. Like, hang them up. Well, you're going to love idea. It. In fact, my crush is a great idea, an alternative mm. to doing traditional framing that people can do. So I'm very excited about that, but we'll get to that at the end. So I love this idea of kind of just cleaning out your closet of things, just sitting around waiting for you to have time to address them. So I love the idea of framing the artwork. So another thing that you can do uh, to completely change your look is to add some pillows or change the pillows out. You know, we love the quick fix of a pillow and it's amazing how just changing out your pillows and your throws can completely change the look of the room. So I found actually two pillows that I really like that I thought are really pretty uh, from Ballard Designs. One is an um, antelope pattern. It's it's a faux, so it's not real antelope, but it's a really beautiful pattern and it comes in a couple different colors. I thought that was really pretty. And another pillow they had that I thought was just really fresh and cool. And these both look very wintry too. So it's just perfect for uh, this time of year. And the other one is a blue pillow uh i think they're calling it a celestial embroidered pillow so it's blue with embroidered white stars all over the pillow and i think there's the reverse as well where it's white with the blue stars so these are two pillows that i think would would really refresh things but also you know these are very subtle color wise but it's also a great time to add a lot of color to your house and just really add some beautiful bright winter colors like a strong pink or a strong green uh, any kind of those winter jewel tone colors I think would be beautiful this time of year 
Oh, yeah, that would be lovely. And if you're looking for something special to add, you know, maybe you took Anita's advice and you've cleared off the mantle and the coffee table and you just don't want to put back what you have or it just doesn't seem like the right thing, browse museum shops online and add something really unique and artful to your home. It's going to support these museums, which are obviously all struggling right now because they can't have people come in. And you are going to find something that you're not going to see in every catalog that comes in the mail or in most other people's homes. So I poked around and found a really beautiful extra large bowl from the Whitney Museum in New York. It's handmade porcelain and white porcelain on the outside and it's 22 karat gold on the inside it's so beautiful and it would be stunning either empty or you know maybe you put a little something in it but you definitely want to see the gold and then another really unique item i saw from the um seattle arts museum and it's this a set of koi fish glasses so when you stack them up it looks like a a glass sculpture of a koi fish, but it's just in the glass color. So I think they have it in teal and gray. It's not painted or anything like that. And when you take it apart, it's four tumblers and they're all sort of different shapes because of the different parts of the koi fish. Like I'm not even into (laughs) fish and I thought it was so cool. Really interesting. And then a complete aside, which doesn't really have anything to do with mood boosting, but I never heard of this museum. And having lived in New York for a very long time, I had never heard of it. And I suspect a lot of you hadn't. The Mm -hmm. Tenement Museum, it's in Lower Manhattan. As you might imagine, it uh, celebrates the uniquely American story of immigration. Very cool museum. And it's two tenement buildings and I guess you go through the museum and it goes through the lives of the families I don't know if it's sort of fictional non-fiction I'm not sure of the families that lived in these tenements but they have a really cool shop and they sell a lot of interesting things and one thing which I thought was really charming is the Ellis Island Immigrant Cookbook it's stories and authentic recipes from people from all different lands that came to New York and came through Ellis Island. And so I thought that could be a mood booster too if you had a new recipe or something hmm. really yummy mm-hmm. cooking on the stove and you've got that really nice scent of something, maybe a soup or something going on. Worth checking out. We'll put the links to all of those museums in the show notes. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's right, but you do have time now. So uh, in a a previous episode back in December, we talked about as the hot topic, putting fabric on the wall, like wallpaper and maybe doing an accent wall. So I thought that would be a nice mood booster if someone had the time and wanted to do that. I think that would be a wonderful, fun project and would look fantastic would be to use the fabric as a wallpaper. And another idea similar to that, would, which is, again, just kind of an accent thing to do, would be to paint your kitchen island a contrasting color. And we you know we love that dark gray, and we love the navy blue. So, uh, you know, we're really talking about kind of if you have a white kitchen going with a dark color on the island. Or if you have dark cabinets, maybe go with a light on the island. But just something contrasting. And the reason I say just the island is, you know, just something... It's not going to take you forever to do. So it's much easier to do just the island than the whole kitchen. Yeah. And what a dramatic change that could be. And if anybody does that fabric on I the wall, I want to see it. Please let us know. Yeah, I do too. I kind of want to do it, but <laughs> yeah, I want someone to do it first. <laughs> As everybody's been talking about so much during this COVID and the quarantines and whatnot bring nature in, but also go out for a daily walk. That's really going to boost your mood. And when you're out there, do what I do, forge stuff, bring up leaves and branches and bring them home with you and stick them in vases. It will really perk you up, I promise. And if you are really industrious and you live in a place where there are trees that are now sort of dormant and will be blooming you can force branches so I have a whole section in my book so if any of you lovely ladies or gentlemen who are listening have my book you could turn to that chapter you just have to cut the branches cut them on an angle stick them in some water and really let them do their thing Um, you could also force some bulbs it's just not paper whites pre-Christmas you could force them after that's really beautiful for January and into February that's when I usually do them is in January because it's just everything else is gone and that's just something that I enjoy watching them come up in January 
Yeah, and I love that scent. Oh, I just love it. The paper white scent? Cause it's a little, yeah, I don't know. I It's a little funky. I love it. Yeah, it's not my yeah, favorite. Yeah, so but... I think people either love it or they really hate it. Yeah, and that's the same thing with the, the white Casablanca lilies. I love hmm. that scent, and okay. you either love it or you really don't. And I did something recently that I wanted to share with everyone. As Anita and I have told you before, we both live in a city, um, you know, obviously when she's not out at her, at her farm, and we're pretty close to our neighbors on either side. So in our living room, we have very tall windows, and because it's a Victorian, my house is just sort of really tall, so that even though, though the windows are tall, they're off the ground, pretty far off the ground. So if I planted a, a hedge or something there, it would take a long time for it to grow where it would be giving me any privacy from my neighbor. So what I did was I bought r- additional raised beds, like the ones I have in the backyard, and I put them up on um, cinder blocks so they're raised, and I planted tall oh. hedging material in them. Stop it. What a great garden idea. Right outside my window. Yes. And so right now the hedges are, you know, they're fairly new, but they're, I got them, uh, you know, when they were tall anyway, but they're kind of skinny. So they haven't filled in and I just put two. And so one blocks each window, but they'll fill in and, you know, their branches will intertwine. Oh, but right now idea. they're just kind of very conical and tall. So I, un, yeah. So for Christmas, I had underplanted them all with white cyclamen. So I'm looking out my window and I have these two tall he- hedging uh, trees and then the white cyclamen. And then I put a white salvia, which the hummingbirds love, in with them to sort of make it sort of a little looser looking. So I can sit in my living room and watch the hummingbirds. Ooh, what a great idea. Down. I love it's this fantastic. idea. And I can't see my neighbors. Well, that's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, another thing I was thinking is why not add some color with a brand new rug? Uh, Just kind of, and I know you like neutral color, so you could go with a neutral color rug, but it's just such a beautiful way to, an easy way to add color to your room. And you can still have kind of a feel, a neutral feel in the room, but also have this pop of color on the floor. So I, I love the very colorful rugs with neutral furniture. But again, it would work with, if you had a lot of color in the room, this would, would work as well. So I have two rugs that I found. Uh, one is kind of an updated Oriental. Uh, it's It's got reds and blues and a teal. It's really pretty. And this one's a synthetic, very inexpensive, less than $100 for a five by seven. And I found this one on Amazon. And then a second one I found, which I think is really pretty, is a blue and yellow plaid rug and I'm really kind of into the plaid rugs these days for some reason Uh, and this one's really pretty it's regularly when we're recording this hopefully they'll still have it uh, $720 regularly at Overstock and it is less than $200 for a 5x8 so I know I mean they really sometimes have some great prices but it's just a pretty soft colored rug and the wool is just such a great material for the rug because they really do uh, resist staining pretty well. So I think this one would be really beautiful. Nice choices. We talked about cleaning already today, but how about Mm -hmm. going non-toxic? Maybe this is the time, if you haven't done it already, to really examine what's under your sink and what you're spraying and wiping down your house with. You can explore the Environmental Working Group's website. I've talked to you guys about that website before. It's really useful. I think the best way to use it is to go there with a product category in mind and search it, and then it'll come up with the different products and the ratings that they have given them. And our longtime sponsor, they're not sponsors today, but I use them all the time, is Aunt Fanny's. Uh, They make wonderful products, and they are always given the best ratings from the environmental working group so you might want to explore them there are a lot of other uh, cleaners out there that are non-toxic but you know it might be a time to sort of reevaluate oh, great what idea. you've got going and on so there. um you know another thing i was thinking about so you were talking about the gardening outside i love the idea and i have a specific urn that's kind of uh, on a pedestal that i found but you wouldn't even have to use this particular one but i love the idea of getting a big 
kind of wide, almost bowl-shaped pot and filling it full of just some little plants like you might have in a terrarium, uh, some succulents or some ferns. And I just think that would just be such a mood boost to see these beautiful plants indoors. Uh, and I, I think just the main thing is going to be that you do all succulents or things that like the moisture. I mean, the, some of the pictures I've seen have mixed ferns with succulents, which I don't think is a good no, thing. No, 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 no. I know. I'm thinking, well, they must have just taken them. Right. They must have just put them together. But I, I just think I love the idea of doing this kind of for January and enjoying the plants indoors. And then if they don't make it that long, well, you've enjoyed them for a while. Yeah, there's no harm in that. You don't have to keep them forever, but you might. But what a mood boost, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Houseplants of all types. But I love your idea of maybe just making one planter a lot of smaller plants, but the same type of plant. It's going to really uh, make a big impact as well in your decor. How about rethinking your hallway? Often used and overlooked. Your hallway might just not have anything going on, and maybe it's time for it to get jazzed up a little bit. Think about a runner, uh, maybe Ruggable or any company, Overstock, Amazon, any place, Dash and Albert, everybody's got runners. Maybe add a runner, maybe think about adding some art, maybe do some shelves over the doorways, Um, particularly if you have a hallway that ends with a doorway. We have something like that. It's the doorway to the third floor. And I'm going to put a shelf over it and then maybe put some of my tarnished silver that I love, like a collection of something up there. Um, Not too many things and not a lot of different things, but something that will be a small collection altogether. I think could look really great on a shelf over a door. Maybe paint the doors. There are so many things that you could do in a hallway, but again, oftentimes it's just a place that you don't give too much thought to, but you do go through it all the time, coming and going. So you see it a lot and it might as well be beautiful. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, really kind of thinking about the things that you might normally ignore. And uh, along those notes, I was thinking that we're talking about making everything beautiful in your house. And it made me think, what about the scents in your house? Because, again, you're probably missing all that wonderful baking and all those scents Mm. of the holiday. So I was thinking this would be a great time to make a citrus simmer to just kind of leave on the stove to just scent the whole house or maybe to make a lemon lavender linen spray or a rose linen spray to spray your sheets with or the linens in your linen closet. And uh, what I've included is a link to magnolia.com where they have recipes for all these three things. So I just think it would be fun to kind of the whole process of making one of these and then, and then using it to just really make your house smell wonderful. Oh, I love that idea. I'm definitely going to do that. Well, but the nice thing about making it yourself is you can make sure that it has only natural ingredients. I mean, there are actually a lot of natural sprays now and scents that you can get that do have, you know, just the essential oils in them. But I, I'm a little concerned sometimes because of what you said. I don't want any toxic scents in my house. So I'm very careful about the ingredients. So this way you would know for sure that they're very, you know, fresh and natural ingredients. Yes. Okay. I'm going to definitely check out those recipes. Along the citrus lines, how about starting a new routine and drinking lemon water in the morning? Now, of course, this doesn't have much to do with your decor, but it does have something to do with your mood. I started doing this several years ago, and it is something I look forward to every morning. I have my tea, but I don't have my tea, and I don't really do much of anything else until Mm -hmm. I've had my lemon water. It hydrates you, you know, so you're having a big glass of water right off the bat, aids digestion, it prevents oxidation, it will help with weight loss because if you think about it, if you were drinking juice or you're drinking something else and you substitute it with lemon water uh, pretty much every day of the Mm -hmm. week over a course of time, well, think of all those calories you're not drinking with juices. And it also um, gives you a lot of potassium. So lots of good reasons to do this. And it just does make you feel good. So give it a try. You know, I would say try it for at least a week, maybe two weeks, and see if you're sort of craving it in the morning or, you know, if you're noticing that you feel a little bit better. Because if you're well hydrated during the day, you definitely are going to be feeling better. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. 
BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt well i have a few more ideas uh, one thing would be to change out your dishes now i know not everybody has 10 sets of dishes like we do but i'm <laughs> thinking maybe you have more than one So if you do, you know, just uh, change them out and try maybe using the set that's in the back of the the cabinet for a while. And if you don't have an extra set, well, maybe go get uh, four or six or eight plates of a different different pattern to use that you can kind of switch out. And then that kind of makes it fun and exciting every time you switch those out. Um, We used Christmas dishes, so I just put those up. And now we're back to to our other dishes. But I think that's a a fun thing to do. And you don't have to buy the whole set. There's a lot of vintage dishes you can buy for a great price, usually at resale shops or on Etsy or eBay. But again, you don't have to buy the whole set. Just buy just buy dinner plates and you know, don't worry about the rest or just have some and if you have some white side dishes, they go with usually everything. So, you know, we have now if I have like some little bowls, they're all white and they go with all my dishes. So that's one option. But also while you're changing out your dishes, maybe put a pretty tablecloth on the table. Maybe get a new one if you don't, uh, if you're tired of all your old ones. But just kind of time to change it out. Maybe go with new placemats or a new tablecloth. And, um, you know, with the dishes, then it's just going to feel very fresh and new. You know, when I got those, they're black. I love them, though. When I got those six oh, salad yes. plates from Beer One. Yes. like. Everyone in my family is like, oh, that looks really nice. That's pretty. And it just really just makes such an impact on the table. And I use them frequently now. And I really Did like them. Do they mix with your other dishes? Yeah, because they're solid black. And they go with all my, oh, my solid white dishes. Oh, well, perfect. And then they go with the vintage black and white transfer wear that I like to use once in a while. But they're great. So, And they were so inexpensive. So something like that could be really fun. And if you're into something with more of a pattern than I am, there's zillions of salad plates out there. I think that's a great size to change out because it can sit on the other plate. Oh, the dinner or the salad? Going, well, I think you can do whichever. The salad. Yeah, you could do yeah. a different pattern. Or maybe just get, like you said, maybe get some salad plates that coordinate with your dinner plates 
even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. they don't have to. I mean, you know, just kind of change things around. I, and then just have some white ones that you can kind of mix in is fun. That go with every. That they just go with everything. So I, I just I think that's yes. fun to kind of mix and match. And if you're if you're stacking them like you said, it's nice to have some that coordinate together. So that's just kind of a fun thing to do. Um, but I love dishes, so of course, of course, that's going to be one of my tips. Yes. And how about those uh, decor books that we all love? Sometimes you'll get one. You've gone through it. And now it's being used as a riser in your decor or something like that. But maybe you haven't really looked at the stack in a while. And maybe it's time to sort of refresh them. Just recirculate the ones that you've already looked at. Or maybe, dare I say, their spines don't go with your color palette anymore or something like that. <laughs> Kelly, you're not supposed yeah. to choose your books that way. <laughs> Well, yeah, all my war and peace are in black and gold. Now, uh, you can use any, uh, you know, obviously any spine colors that you like if you really love the book. But if you're going for, uh, you know, the riser look, uh, maybe you want them to coordinate. But here's the thing. Maybe you have had these books for a while. Maybe you looked at them already and you've enjoyed them. Or maybe you thrifted them and, you know, they they're older, maybe it's time to revisit that stack that you have and buy yourself some new decorating books that you can really pour over and enjoy the text and the photos. And maybe you can sit in your little nook that I told you about creating earlier in the episode. And then you can use them as decor going forward in 2021 and and the years forward. And the other ones you can either donate or use in a different place in your house. I think that's a great idea. And and one more idea is to add some wallpaper or paint the back of your bookcase. I love that idea. It would completely refresh the look of the bookcase and just give it a totally new look. And it wouldn't be a major project that would take weeks and weeks. I think you could probably do it in a day. Oh, yeah, that would be fun and really make a dramatic difference. Uh, another dramatic thing you can do in your home is get a rescue dog. Just plugging it for the rescues that's, that are out there. I don't know that. Yeah, no, I, okay. <laughs> that's not going to be great for your house. But, <laughs> but uh, maybe hold off on that rug boost, if you're thinking about the it rescue. It might boost your mood, but it's not going to boost your house's mood. <laughs> your mood. I know so many people who have gotten puppies Aww. lately from, from the rescues. Yes. Several of my friends. Yeah. And yeah. So, no, it's totally so worth it. Obviously, they destroy, they, but it's totally worth it. No, we have lots of collie scratches all over our floors, but we yeah. Love and them. I know I'm not going to, anybody who's not in the market, I'm not going to uh, convince you by just throwing that out there. But maybe I thought there might be a few people that are, you know, thinking about it. And maybe I'll tip you over to heading into your humane society. All we have to do or, is or share your... some pictures of your little guys. And I think oh, that'll be all you need to do. They are so darn cute. They are pretty darn cute. Okay, so what's the hot topic? The hot topic is, uh, is traditional dead or long-lived traditional? Uh, this article basically makes the point that traditional is g- going up in favor and going down. And basically, when you read the article, you'll find out that one source, Modsy, is says that uh, mid-century modern is going up in popularity. So is traditional and so is classic style. But the uh, National Kitchen and Bath Association says that traditional is on the decline. So they're just kind of pointing out that you're going to get it, you're getting some contradictory information. But again, the um, you know the kitchen and uh, bath association, I would think, is not necessarily looking at the whole house, but just those two rooms. And that might have a little different um, trend action versus the rest of the house. Yeah, I think traditional is just becoming hotter and hotter. And we talked about that in our recent trend episode. So we can link to those here too. So I have to agree with Mazi on that. I'm not so sure about the mid-century modern. I think that's had its... uh, We keep hoping, but I don't know. (laughs) Well, you know, it, it was really popular at that time Mm -hmm. and then it became really popular again but i think it's really on the wane i think anything that's so thematic and and so distinct to a time period is really not the way people are decorating now certainly not the way i want to decorate well we'll see yeah i uh, yeah i don't know it seems pretty popular but yeah 
if not this year, maybe the next year or two, it probably will be out of out of uh, out of sight, out of mind by then. So I have been on the edge of my seat, as I'm sure everyone else has been. What is your crush? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, our blogging friend, a pretty handy girl. Oh, yes. She's so sweet. I, she isn't she? So she had a tutorial I saw on Facebook or something, and I thought, oh my goodness, I love this. It's hanging art without a frame. And you know the look of the artwork where you might see it in a classroom and it has kind of a a, a tr- piece of trim wood at the top and a piece of trim wood at the bottom, and then it's hung by a chain and it's not actually in a frame. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that look. She has a tutorial on how to do that. And it's super inexpensive. You paint the wood and you just kind of attach the uh, uh, your artwork to the back. And you can use some uh, archival tape so that it doesn't yellow it and that and it is removable. Uh, and then hang it by the chain. And my goodness, I, didn't, I don't remember what she said the price was, but I'm guessing it's going to be $10 or less. And, oh, you yeah. know, the frames for some of these large pieces of artwork can be, you know, $100, $300. Oh, yeah, I know. That's what when I was talking about framing something earlier today, I said, yeah, go get an estimate from your local frame shop or something that first, because I recently took something in for a client and I almost passed out mm-hmm. of what it was going to cost. We ended up not going that route because it was just so expensive. We were, we were trying to shop local. It's just, I don't know why it's so expensive in a frame shop. Mm-hmm. I know, but I just love this idea and it's just so fresh. And now, I mean, this is kind of a hot look right now. And mm-hmm. then if you want to frame it later, you can. So it's not going to, it shouldn't damage your artwork. Anyway, I'm planning, oh, I'm planning cool. to try it. I'll report back. Yeah. Good. You do that and somebody else in the world out there is going to do the fabric on the wall. And we let hope. me know how it goes. <laughs> Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Okay, yeah, what's your crush? I encourage you to do that. Super excited about my crush. Okay, remember I talked about, oh no, my toaster's broken. I have to get a new one. Oh yes, you did mention that. 
And I was going to get the toaster that the you Russell have. The Russell and Hobbs, yes. Which I investigated and are adorable. Yes. Oh, I, I sense a butt coming. Well, then I had my head turned by this little Japanese number. And wow. Okay. I, and then, you know, when you hear about something, you learn about something, then suddenly you're seeing it everywhere. Then food and wine came in. The well, house, they kept track it, of what you looked at and then you saw the ads everywhere, I think. Yeah. Well, this was a magazine that got delivered, and I opened it up, and it was the first full-page ad. Boy, they're really it, spying so on us now. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty fast, too. <laughs> but yes, I think, I, I remember one time, you know, uh, when that, when people first started realizing that happening, someone was like, I can't believe that. Isn't that amazing? I was just looking for Lala. It must and be they showed up on my <laughs> they, Oh, that was a coincidence. But anyway. So what's the brand? Yes. Okay, it's called Balmuda, which does not really sound very Japanese to me, but that's what it's called. And it is this amazing toaster. I, and I'm not going to call it a toaster oven, although it is an oven too. It's just its, it's, Bal- its is own it, thing. Oh, shop Balmuda. Okay, I'm looking. So it's it uses Does it look like a toaster essential- oven though? No, it's very it's very streamlined and it's actually kind of cute but not cute. But but you put it in like a toaster oven, right? Am I on the right page? Yes, you open the door. Oh, look right. at that. Oh, that's very nice looking. So it uses steam technology and precise temperature control to bring out the best in every kind of bread and then it has its oven mode wow. and can cook other items and I did all sorts of research and I was going on to I don't know toaster forums and things like that <laughs> and people were because let me tell you, you everyone <laughs> yes you add water so we add this tiny little cup it looks like an espresso cup for a fairy you add this mm-hmm. tiny little cup of water it looks like you're putting it into like a hole where like that would be in a piggy bank and you slip that the water in well, and you put your toast in there and then it just cooks the outside with the steam technology so the inside of the bread like anita i'm thinking about the bread that you're making how that well i'm looking it would be coming i know out of this, this is machine. not cheap though well this is why i did a lot of research mm-hmm. it's not inexpensive uh it's a 300 dollars mm-hmm, plus mm-hmm. and i'm like i can get a toaster for 50 bucks yeah, or less yeah. but you know we have the big vintage stove and i must tell you to just heat up like you know maybe a piece of pizza from that the kids might have gotten and not eaten the whole pie or something you have to turn the whole thing on it heats up the whole kitchen i'm thinking you know maybe something like this would be useful for us on other levels other than just being a toaster so it is awesome well so it i love like, it i mean yeah and i make all this homemade bread so i mean that would be nice that it's uh you know heating it up oh. just the right way but i'm thinking where am i going to put another toaster well, it's just, it is so cute. Well, I got the black one, but they also have it in white. Mm-hmm. But isn't it pretty? So it's everyone has to look. It's very unique looking. It does, I mean, it looks like a toaster oven, just a, a small one. I mean, a small, mm-hmm. nice looking one. But it's matte black and mm-hmm. it has gold, a little tiny bit of gold mm-hmm. trim to it. It was fitting in just absolutely perfectly with my whole look in my kitchen. Oh, so wow. I was well, really happy with it. it does have great reviews too. Well, so have you gotten it yet? Have you started using it? Oh yeah, we've been using it. It's fantastic. In fact, you know, we've been getting sometimes for Friday afternoon, we'll order lunch from some local place mm-hmm. um, to give us a little boost and also support local restaurants. So we got some caprese sandwiches maybe the Friday before, and they're huge. So nobody finished the other half. On Sunday, we put them in this thing and completely revived them. I think they tasted better than when we got them at the store. Well, and that is the thing about the bread. And, you know, of course, I don't have any preservatives in the bread I make. But, boy, you have to eat it the first. I make a very small loaf because we finish it. If it's not finished in two days, I throw it away because it just gets, you know, just stale very fast. Yeah. So this seems like it might refresh your bread quite nicely. Ooh, it does that. It's so good. It's really good. So um, definitely recommend it. Some people were saying that they've even made scallops in it. I, I don't know. I haven't done anything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would I would have to cook the meal like four different times because it's not very big. But if you were a person who was just making a small thing or certainly warming something up, you could definitely do make a meal in there. So anyway, I love it. Wow. Um, Oh, and I'm just on here looking, and they, now they're giving away a free market bag with the purchase. I didn't get well, a free market bag. <laughs> Did you get it on Amazon or somewhere else? I I ordered it directly from them. Oh, okay, okay. 
but they do have it on Amazon too. Mm, I saw. So it. that's my I'm crush crush crushing on my toaster. Well, good. Well, gee, I like to know when there's some appliance that's really worth buying. Yeah. So today we are not going to share a listener question. We're just going to share. I shouldn't say just, we are going to thank everyone who's been leaving reviews. We've gotten so many more wonderful reviews. It is such a delight. And I have to say, you know, we read every single one of them and we do check there. And I think Anita even gets emails when we get (laughs) reviews. Like, it's just so nice to get the feedback because here we are, you know, talking into, you know, the air and we, it's really nice to know that there are people out there listening and enjoying. So thank you so much to everyone who has been not only listening, but taking the time to leave these fabulous five-star reviews. Uh, One recently uh, reads, you have had me at Peter Brady. What a fun podcast. I finally, <laughs> yeah, isn't that fun? I and mean, if people don't know what that means, it's that we, uh, we talked about Peter Brady being, oh gosh, now I'm going to think of what are you, Christopher Knight, Christopher Knight, uh, um, the decor, uh, brand. And so we talked about that on a whole podcast. Um, let's see. And she says, I made a note of your Amazon brands for future, OMG, Peter Brady is the guy behind Christopher Knight. You learn something every day, and thanks so much for the code. Keep up the great work. We need good content in this crazy world right now. So thank you so much to Annie for leaving that great review. Others enjoying all the ideas. Such a fun friendship-based podcast with helpful ideas. I love their banter and the somewhat impromptu feel of the conversations. (laughs) Well. (laughs) <laughs> Ain't that the truth? They're actually their totally ideas, impromptu. <laughs> totally impromptu. Their ideas have high end vision, but they are practical with reasonable price points in their suggestions. It's been a fun distraction while we were all spending a lot of time at home. So that's from a UI Gal ninety four. Thank you so much. So again. As I'm reading these reviews, let me remind you all that if you leave a review in the month of January and let us know that you did, we will enter you to win a free consult with Anita and I, and that is in celebration of our birthday. And you do not have to bring a gift or sing to us, but we would love to have a consult with one of you. So head over to iTunes, leave us a fabulous review, and then email us at decoratingtipsandtricks at gmail.com and let us know you did and let us know your wacky, wonderful iTunes name. And you will be picked as the winner at random. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've made that quite clear. (laughs) Quite clear. Yes. Who would you be? Like, when it's like when they have the award show and they come out and they read the, um, all the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would be that That, person. That's you. (laughs) That's very sad, but true. Hey, somebody's got to keep me in line. That's right. It's a (laughs) full-time job. Thanks again for hanging out with us. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult with Anita and I. We can't wait to talk to you. 